again, no, no one could figure out who to report this fire to. The Manila Fire Department took over and they couldn't um, engage the Japanese military in any kind of dialogue about how this might have happened. Um, then the Japanese decided to use the remaining there were two buildings that were left, and they used one of them as an infantry barracks for soldiers on furlough from Bataan. And so again, once again, Santa Ana was <coughs> suppressed. We were all scared because all of a sudden we had infantry. Japanese infantry there. Um, <coughs> so I was, I was hidden by my grandparents, my, by my grandmother and my mother, and I went on the I was on the floor of a caritela again smudged with mud, and put between a case of evaporated milk and a sack of rice, and with the cochero, we went past the Japanese soldiers and on to, to Calle Iran, near La Concordia College. There, it was a relief. I was with friends, the Campos family, and um, until we realized that the rumbling going by on Iran Street in the evenings were um, army trucks full of dead people that they were bringing to the Santa Ana racetracks where they were burned. Um, so it seemed like there was just no place <coughs> to go for safety. Um, then I I moved back home and the Japanese then decided it was time for us to leave. My grandmother tried to fight that case saying half of it was hers and they wouldn't listen to her. And um, we moved to Pasay, Ochoa Street in Pasay. And a, exactly a year after that, um, the Navy took, took those houses in Pasay. Then we moved again to an empty dormitory right at the back, right on Asturias, which is on the back gate of the Santo Tomas concentration camp. And there we had a relatively quiet time, except that, uh, that what we were beginning to face then were problems that everyone else was facing in the community. You know, the lack of food, no medicine, um, and zonas happening. And when the zona started on our street, we decided to move e um, immediately and evacuated to Baliwag, Pro uh, Bulacan, on a coconut-fed uh, coconut um, little track, uh, truck or cart, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> and charcoal fed. It, it was like the charcoal fed. <laughs> so we, we, were, we got past the sentries and got to Baliwag. And then at Baliwag, the soldiers began their retreat on the main road going to Baguio and burning houses along the way. We walked with gorillas on the rice paddies um, for two days, um, reaching Barrio Labak at the foot of Mount Riot. Mm. And, and um, there we had food. We had rice and mudfish, lots of mudfish, which was a, a real blessing. But we also realized that we, 
we never quite knew who these men who were helping us. On the rice paddies, there were men who came and carried my sick brothers and sisters. There were, in our little group, there were about 100 people who crossed the rice paddies. And, and some, a lot of them, a lot of them were carried by these men we didn't know. So later, when we were in bar Labak, we had an incident where, where one, one uh, three strange men came on their horseback, carrying, uh, pulling the American flag on the ground, saying to my brother, you Americans, you'll have your time. And my uncle, who was the landowner there, decided to go across to the foot of Mount Arayat to another little barrio and met with Louis Taruk, who was the head of the Hukbalahap. Only then did we know we were with Hukbalahaps. But they were wonderful to us. They really were, except for these occasional scares. And as a child, I didn't know exactly what was going on. Um, So it was there, we were there when the Americans arrived. We were told that they were coming down the main road and my grandmother and I ran to the main road, Pampanga, as fast as we could. It took quite a while. And um, reached the main road and there was this, you know, this army of men in khakis and helmets. And I thought, where did they come from? It's true, I mean, they, they had a very different aura to them. And one came to me and said, what are you doing here? And I couldn't speak any English. I, I was tongue-tied and I said, I'm from here and this is my grandmother. And he bowed to her, and they kept walking on with their guns, and the guerrillas, you know, were across the street hauling the dead in their trucks. And this began our trip back to <clears throat> Columba, I mean, to, to Baliwag, and where, from where we were my grandma and I were going back to Santo Tomas, and um, a, a weapons carrier with a major stopped and asked us if if we could, if we wanted a ride. We rode with them all the way to Columbit, and then he told us that we had to leave there, and that was, you know, pretty much the end of our. <laughs> Japanese story. <laughs> <laughs>